Well, one way or another, I'm glad you're here, whether it's because you really wanted to be here or just because you've been cooped in your house since Friday morning and you were stir crazy, uh, which is probably majority of us. Uh, and, and when I got the text yesterday from Pastor Jay that we're going to go ahead and have 1045 service, my first thought is, uh, that's kind of crazy. And then when I saw you all show up, I thought, well, you're kind of crazy. So we'll just all be crazy together. And I want to welcome those. Uh, uh, yeah, see, th- this is fantastic. I want to welcome those who are watching by internet. I know we've probably got a big crowd watching by internet today. I hope you're warm. And, and I want to say welcome to those who, uh, are here from other churches. I know Pastor John's here from the Pulse. He didn't make, uh, he, he didn't drive to Gasaway this morning, figured that would probably be. So he's joining us. And, and I know there's a few others that are here from other uh, churches. I want to just say welcome uh, and thanks for joining us. And uh, Maranatha is a special kind of people, but if you, if your church was canceled because of weather and you pushed out to a church that's not your home church, you're even more special. Because you're at a church that's not your home church. And I pray the Lord bless you like nobody's business this week for pressing out and getting in. I pray that the windows of heaven would open up and just pour out that, that would pour out all over your... Pastor John, I pray that it, it hits you so hard that it pulls out all over your church and, and it continues. Can we just lift our just stretch our hands towards Pastor John? Lord, I pray right now for the pulse and gas away. Lord, I pray that a, a, the hunger that's on the inside of him to press out to, to a church that's not his home church in inclement weather... Lord, I pray that that hunger would 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 uh, be released on his whole congregation. Lord, that they would come in when the weather is good on Wednesday, and they would be hungry for more of you in ways that they never have. In Jesus' name, Amen. Would y'all give God praise? I tell you, it is a it is a, a fun place to be. I, how many of y'all shoveled and shoveled and shoveled? If you're here, somebody shoveled or you shoveled. Uh, wow. Wow, that was a lot of snow. Woo! I, I should have skipped my workout Thursday because I got it Friday and Saturday. It was, wow. But man, wasn't it pretty? I mean, just to look out over it. And, and I, hope, I hope you weren't just turned off by it because of the amount. I hope you got out and enjoyed it. I have two little girls that Charlie, when you set her down in it, she just, no moving. Came up to her chest. She's like, Dad! But man, it was so fun when they finally scraped uh, our neighborhood and she was able to walk and just kind of play in the snow banks that were created. It, it, I just, I loved it. Took them sledding and I, it, it can be fun. At, yes, it can be work and it can be dangerous. But man, I hope you take time to just enjoy the masterpiece that God's created. So uh, this morning, uh, I'm going to uh, be teaching my, my main uh, scripture is in Matthew chapter 26. Uh, verses 21 and 22. So if you'd turn there with me. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had the privilege of, of being with Pastor David Bracken in, in Parisburg. Uh, he needed someone to come in and fill in as a worship leader. So I drove down that Sunday morning and uh, I got there as they were having prayer time. And, and uh, I was sitting on the front pew just uh, meditating, you know, saying, Lord, just prepare me uh, to do what you want me to do and, and the assignment I've been given for this Sunday. And he sat down behind me and he began to just pray not for me, but, but he just began to pray and pray out loud. And, and one thing he said was, Lord, help me be like the disciples and not they, but me. And, and I'll be honest with you, I thought, what in the, what? So that, that whole thought has been in my mind for like the past two weeks. And then uh, when pastor asked me to fill the pulpit, the Lord began to, to deal with me about Matthew chapter 26. And uh, in verses 17 is really when the passage starts. And just as an overview, it's Jesus is celebrating the Passover with his disciples. This is just uh, hours before he's about to be betrayed. And, and, and then we all know the passion story of, of his trial, his, his arrest, his trial, his crucifixion, and, and, his, uh, and his resurrection. But uh, these two scriptures, is, it, when we get to verse 21... Uh, it, as they were eating, it says, now as they were eating, he said, assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And in today's culture, if someone were to look, like if we're sitting around the dinner table and someone says, one of y'all are going to betray me, this, this, this is what we would do. It's that guy. It's that guy. We, we all of a sudden, we start going, I bet. I mean, if there's 12 people around the table and then Jesus we, we want to say it's one of the other 11 because it's not me. It's not me. 
It's one of them. It's they. If, one, if someone's going to betray you, it's... But this is, what, this is the, the part that stuck out to me. And they were exceedingly sorry. This is verse 22. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. And each of them began to say, not just one of them, each of them began to say to him, Lord, is it me? Lord, is it I? Have you ever asked that question? Have you ever asked yourself, Lord, what, what is hindering a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Is it me? Bethy and I, when, when we first started ministering together 10, 12 years ago, it was at a college ministry in Marshall. We weren't even dating. Uh, we attended church here as kids. We reconnected at Marshall. We just began to, to lead worship in a team uh, at this uh, ministry called Campus Flood. And she and I would, th- this is how our relationship started. We lived off campus. We li- she lived in St. Albans. I lived in Scott Depot. She'd drive to Scott Depot and get in a car, and we'd drive to Marshall together. So we'd, we would see these great outpours, you know, uh, on a, a weekly basis, but we never really broke through that threshold. So the conversations would, would end up being, Lord, what's holding back an outpouring of your spirit? And, and we would get real with each other, and, and we would start praying, Lord, if it's me, and, and I was the, the lead worship leader. I, you know, we had, there were three of us, and I, I was the, the lead worship leader, and I thought, Lord, in the position I'm in, if it's me, then remove me. Because that's, that's how desperate I was and, and still am for a move of God. If it's me, then Lord, change me or move me out of the way. If that, but but what, what our culture wants to do is to start pinpointing one of the other 11 around the table. We want, you know, it would have been easy. I'm sure, some, I mean, Judas, Judas, we all know who ended up betraying him. It was Judas. But I mean, can you imagine if you were one of the others? You know, you've probably picked up on signals that maybe Judas is a little uh, unhappy or, or maybe he's, he's, there's something just not real, real certain about Judas. But no, instead of wanting to point fingers, I've always heard this. If you point one finger at somebody, you got three pointing back at you. They had a moment where they were like, Lord, search me, check me. Is it me? Because I don't want to be that person. So the, those were things that the Lord really just began to, to hit with me. Don't, don't worry, Joey, don't worry about the, the people around you. Focus on you. And, and, and if you were here a few weeks ago when I had the opportunity to preach, it was, uh, a lot of it was, you must die daily. Well, sometimes I fail. And, and when I fail, it's not on the people that are in my home to blame it on. It's not because of my kids. It's not because of my wife. If I do something that's not dying to my flesh, it's solely because of my decision. God gave me free will to make my decisions. And sometimes, I, every day I need to wake up and go, is it me? Lord, is it me? Not the woman laying beside me, not the kids that are in the bedroom uh, across the hall. Is it me? Am I, am I doing anything that's, that's hindering a move of God in my home, in my personal life, and in, in, in our church family? See, because it, it takes all of us. And all of us can, have, one person being uh, out of the will can affect the entire group. Because everyone has to be in their place. So then the Lord, last night I just, I, I just sat down and said, Lord, I, okay, uh, what, what, what do you have for me? See, I, I don't want anything to give you unless it's for me. So I said, Lord, what do you want to show me? And too often we look elsewhere when we should examine ourselves. So he just began to bring scripture up. Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. If we could put that on the screen. I know some of y'all may not have dug out your Bibles. Uh, from the snow. It, said, it says, search me, O God, know my heart. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Not search them, not search that one. You know, when, when Adam was caught eating the fruit in the garden, his ultimate blame wasn't necessarily even on Eve. It was, it's that woman you gave me. 
Well, I mean, yeah, the woman was in there, but then God was in there, and you're really going to pass blame. But that's what we want to do. We always want to pass the blame. We say, he made me do it. He made me do it. And so, so search me, O oh God, know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. Lead me in the way everlasting. The, I mean, those were, that was a scripture. Psalm 139 verse 1 says, examine me. Examine me. Matthew 7, 3. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in someone else's eye when you've got a plank in your own? And here's the deal. I can talk to you all like this because you're crazy enough to be out in two foot of snow. I mean, really. I'm talking to, to and, and uh, I'm talking, and, and if you're watching by internet and you've, you've logged on, that's because you are committed. And, and these were 12 men that walked by him daily. They saw the things that weren't even written in Scripture. They laid their head on the pillows beside him. They, they ate with him. They, they walked with him. And see, I, the Lord has really dealt with me because I believe that one reason that the 12 stuck with him wasn't just because of the things we read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, and, and then really in all books of the Bible because of what he did. I believe that it, the reason that they were with him from one city and then you read of him, them with him in the next is because they saw him live it out in the travel. Okay. You know, when they went, they, they were in one city and they went to see Lazarus. Well, they stuck with him to, see, to go see Lazarus raised from the dead. Why did they stick with him? Because what he preached in this city and what he was going to do in this city, he lived out right here. So they understood, search me. Search me. Know my heart. Know my thoughts. Because I don't want to be that one that betrays him. I, I didn't want... All, none of the 12, I mean, Peter, you know, he looked at Peter and said, before, before the, 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 the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. Peter, no, no, no. But he did. Why? Because he's human? Because he's not perfect? Because he does fail? But the thing I love about the story of Peter is then later we, we hear on this rock, I'll be, Peter's confession because there's redemption. And, and, and it doesn't mean that when you fail, you're, you're just done. It doesn't mean that, 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 that when, you, when you screw up and when you, when you don't die to yourself, when, when, he does exam, when he examines your heart and reveals something to you, that's your chance to get it together. That's your chance to say, Lord, okay, now rid me of that. Purge me of that. I, I can't do that anymore. And it's not on you if someone else does that. It may be you shouldn't eat chocolate anymore. And someone may bring in the biggest chocolate candy bar beside you. And you're thinking, well, that's just a sin. No, it may not be for them because they haven't been checked on it. But search your heart. Don't worry about theirs. See, we, 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 well, well, and here's the deal. Sin is sin. And there are things that are laid out that are known as sin. That we, we, but if you get convicted on one, I, I believe it was Pastor Bobby who had, hadn't eaten sweets for like years. Years. And, and we would have something go on around here in cookies. And anytime there's excess cookies at the end of an event, they end up in the, the staff kitchen. They, and laying on a the table, there's a big spread. He just walked past. I mean, you'd, at any given time, you could find a staff member grabbing two or three cookies, especially if they're chocolate. You'll find Brandon somewhere close by. He is a chocolate fiend. But it wasn't on, Pastor Bobby was the one who was told, you got to get rid of the, the sweets. And if, had he not done it, he was wrong. But you don't hit Brandon and go, hey, that wasn't his. Because we've got to search our own heart. And we don't like to search our own heart. We, we we like, we like it easy. Well, that's not too bad. That's what we tell ourselves. We talk, we talk ourselves out of it. You know, that's not too bad. You know. We, we, we talk ourselves in, in, out of whatever or into anything. We, we can. 
And, and as I was setting, setting last night, eating dinner and, and just collecting thoughts, I, I hear this voice. And to be honest with you, I don't know if it was God or if it was Pastor Terry, but because they sounded a lot alike. I, I'm serious. And here's why. Because this is what, this is what he brought my, this is, this is really what the Lord brought me back to is Proverbs 4, 24, verse 23. And if you're around Pastor Terry long enough, you're going to hear him say it once. And if you hear him say it once, you're going to hear him say it a million times. And it's keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. There's not probably a staff meeting that goes by where that's not quoted from Pastor Terry. Because he, he takes a few minutes to encourage the staff at the end of staff meetings on Tuesday morning. And most of the time, this is what he wraps up with. Why? Because your heart's deceptively wicked. If your mouth has a problem, really it's your heart. Because from out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if, out of your ma- if your mouth is constantly causing you problems, find out what's in your heart that's coming out your mouth. Garbage in, garbage out. And I thought back to when, the, sitting, around the, sitting around that table, you know, just hours before his trial and, 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 and crucifixion, what, you know, Lord, we've walked with you and, you know, he's trying to teach them, you know, this is my body uh, broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you. I'm shedding it. I'm giving my life for you. And then he, right before that, he just says, one of you are going to betray me. And immediately they're, they're taken back to the words of David, search me, know me. Because I, I don't want to be separated from you. And I thought, wow, that's a big contradiction to what the world we live in because we always want to pass blame on the other guy. I mean, think about it. I'm, I'm about tired of political ads. I'm about tired of it. But everybody wants to blame the other guy. I don't care if you're Republican, you're blaming... you. Right now, you're, you're competing against someone in your own party. So Republicans can't even get it together, and Democrats, they're, they're arguing with one another. It's not party versus party at this point. You want to blame, well, yours not, isn't going to work. Yours isn't going to work. You know, we're blaming presidents from three on back or whatever. And you, really? Search me. My prayer for, for any of our, our world leaders and, and, and our, our country's leaders is, Lord, that they would search their heart and that they would see where they're deceptively wicked because they have a pivotal role to play. And if blessings and curses flow from the head down, and that's a, I don't want the curse of a deceptively wicked man in the, in the office of president. I respect the office, but i got to pray for the people who get in that. Why? Because they're human. Their, their heart is easily turned. I mean, if, if, if Judas walked daily with Jesus and he was able to betray him with a kiss, do we really think that we're not in the same boat that we could do the, the, something small? Something small. I, you know, and, and I thought, Lord, what... what we, we identify the big ones. We identify the, the addictions of this and that. And, and those are big, but it, it's those small things. I, you know, it, the Lord really has worked on me this past month to set for, for me, what 2016 is for me, is to recognize the small things. Because I, I don't want a small thing to hinder anything. And it's the small things that spoil the vine. The little foxes will spoil it. And I, I thought, Lord, what, what in, then what? Why? And that's when he brought me back. Keep your heart with all diligence, Joey. Because out of it flow the issues of life. And I, 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 this, these past 36 hours, 48 hours in my house, I get stir crazy. That shouldn't surprise anybody who knows me. I just don't do well in the same location for hours at a time. It just does not work. 
And, and I love spending time with my kids. And I love spending time. I've enjoyed my snow days. But there were times that we needed to get out of the house. And thankfully, because I was snowed in, my in-laws live about 200 yards down the street. Because even just a change in scenery make things a, a, a lot smoother. But the Lord, the Lord really, he, he dealt with me. Joey, you still got some things to work on. Because you shouldn't, I mean, let's be honest. How many of you found yourself, if, found yourself at odds with someone in your house while you were cooped up for the, am I the only one that did that? Am I the only one that did that? I mean, like, for no, for no reason. For no reason, like, you just find yourself like, what? 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 And really the problem was, Joey, get over yourself. And I didn't want to because I'm in a house and there's a foot of snow outside. And the only way to get out of the house is to shovel. And I, 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 uh, oh, no. But man, every time I shovel more. And then keep your heart with all diligence, Joey. I'm like, I'm trying, Jesus. I am trying with every shovel. I am trying. That is why I'm out here. Work on me. Work on me. And you may say, well, that didn't happen in my house. Well, I'm, you've reached a level of sanctification that I'm still working on. I, I mean, seriously. Seriously. We love each other. I, I love, but why? Because I've still got work to be done. Pastor Jay said it as he's getting ready to take up offering. You know, he's working, he's moving. And all I could think about is it was this, it was this song I heard as a kid. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make moon and stars, sun, earth, Jupiter, and Mars. But how loving and patient he must be because he still works on me. You're a masterpiece. But you are not finished Because our heart is what he want, really wants to work on. And every day we have to make a decision to say, okay, Lord, shine more of your light on me. Show me. Search me. I told Pastor Jay uh, when we got here, I said, I'm going to set a world record for longest sermon to fewest people. I figured, you know what, you pressed out to get here, so <laughs> you ought to be here a while. But honestly, J.D. and Nicole, I'm, I'm about done. But this morning when you pressed out, I don't know what you came for. I, I, I know what the Lord gave me to, to give out. And uh, to the people on the internet, I mean, I, I'm thankful you've tuned in. You know, I'm thankful that we have people who came and got on cameras and that this is being broadcast in homes who knows where. And, and I don't know who this was for, I know it was for me because I'm still a work in progress. And I thought, Lord, I, I just want, I want you to search me this morning. I can't worry about the people to my right or the people to my left. I have to worry about me because my heart is easily deceived. So if you'd stand to your feet, we're gonna get into a time of just prayer and I'm going to ask you this morning to allow the Lord to search you in maybe ways that hurt see we want to say Lord you can search this part of my heart but don't touch that one why because I've moved the stuff that he doesn't he may not care for I've moved it there so just expose this one we've all been there We've got company coming over and we shove all the stuff into one bedroom and shut the door and say, just keep people out of that one. That's what we want to do with Jesus. That's what we want to do. We want to, we want to clear it out, move it aside, put a lock and key on the door and say, okay, shine your light here, but just don't touch that one. This morning, I'm, I'm going to ask that you allow him to search your heart entirely because out of it flows the issues of life. And I'll be honest with you, I'm tired of issues. I'm tired of issues. And it's very easy. I'll be honest, you get on Facebook at any point, you can find out 90% of people's issues that do no benefit. They, they don't benefit anybody. They don't even benefit the person who's, who's venting those issues. 
There's no benefit. But they need to take time to allow the Lord to, to handle them, to minister to them, to show them. And this morning, I'm going to ask, instead of turning, asking the Lord to turn the light on some, somebody else, it's for Him to turn the light on you. I look at it as almost like one of those CSIs where they've got the flashlight and a little red thing that shows blood and different things. It's to allow him to get that up close. Oh, it looked good. You've tried to clean it off, but you've not let my blood really pour over that. So this morning as J.D. and Nicole sing, I'm going to ask you to either find your place around the altar or at your seat, I, I don't care. But just say, search me. Search me, oh God, and know my heart. So, as they get ready to sing, if you just obey however the Lord is prompting you and leading you, these altars are open. Would you come in Jesus' name? Heal my heart, Lord, make me clean. And open up my eyes to the things unseen. Show me how to love like you have loved me. And break my heart for what breaks yours. I'll give everything I am for your kingdom's cause. As I walk from earth into eternity. Father, Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to search us this morning. God, I ask you to search me on a second-to-second -second basis. Lord, I ask you to just search your people. Lord, I pray that we would allow you to search us in ways that you've never searched us before. Lord, to get down to everything. Allow, allow you in in ways that maybe we haven't before. And expose anything that needs to be exposed. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for th this body of believers, Lord, that pressed out this morning. Lord, I thank you for those that turned on the computer and decided to tune in because they couldn't get in. Lord, I pray that this morning, Lord, you would just infiltrate their home. Lord, we just give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name. 
I heard a man say one time, I'm going to preach what the Lord gave me, and when I'm done, I'm done, and I'm not going to add to it. So I, I'm not going to add to it. These altars are open. Don't forget that 6.30 this evening, we will be back here to, to lift up the name of Jesus and to, to, to see how he leads and what he wants. So we're going to ask, if you can, to be back. If not, we will be live on the Internet again tonight. Be safe. When you're driving home, God bless you. Thanks for coming. In Jesus' name.